Hi everyone, GD here. I'm glad you could all join me today. Well, today I want to share an 1897 half eagle. That would be a $5 gold eagle. This particular one ran from 1839 to 1908 in two different varieties. It ran from 1839 to 1866 is variety one and from 1866 to 1908 as variety two. This one here is variety two. The difference between the two would be in 1866 they add it in God we trust above the eagle's head here. Um, these coins were designed by Christian Grobricht uh, they weigh 8.359 grams. They have a composition of 90% gold and 10% copper. And the net weight is 0.24187 of pure gold. They're 22 and a half millimeters. But I want to discuss something more than that today. I want to discuss a little bit about the history of gold since this particular coin was created. And the reason for that, tomorrow is an important date in the history of gold ownership in the United States. Actually, it goes a little bit beyond that. But, um, but on uh, August 15th, 1971, Richard Nixon removed the gold standard in the United States. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back a little bit to when this coin was actually made and we'll go forward from there. In 1897, when this coin was created, we were on a bimetallic monetary system here in this country. Both gold and silver were considered monetary metals. But just a few years later, all that started changing. On March 14, 1900, President William McKinley signed the Gold Standard Act, which established gold as the sole basis for redeeming paper currency. The act halted the practice of allowing silver to also serve as a monetary standard. You know, it did not take long for our government to really screw up the monetary system in this country. In 1913, Congress created the Federal Reserve to stabilize gold and currency values. The U.S. and European co countries suspended the gold standard so they could print enough money to pay for their military involvement in World War I. You know, <clears throat> I think if the government and the Fed would just leave their hands off of the economy and money, Things would have their ups and downs. It's just that we wouldn't have the extreme ups and downs that they create all the time and the devaluation of our dollar as bad as they do. But these are just my opinions. I am not a financial advisor, so, and I am not an analyst, but that's just the way I read it. But the advantage of the gold standard was to limit the powers of government or banks from causing price inflation by issuing excessive amounts of paper currency. Let's forward up to 1933 under Executive Order 6102, Franklin Delano Roosevelt made it illegal for U.S. citizens to own gold except for jewelry and collector coins. Now, I am so tickled to death that um, so many people ignored that because today we do have a supply of pre-1933 gold coins, some of them that may not have fit into the category of being collectible coins, but we have so many of them today to be able to add to our gold stacks and coin collections that I think it's a, a, a milestone there that so many people did ignore that order. But of course, in doing so, many people did hurt themselves because their gold became something that was totally unusable for a number of years. The prohibition on gold ownership ended 
or was relaxed, I should say, in 1964. But that really didn't change much because the government still wasn't honoring turning in gold or paper currency for gold at that time. But now we come up to the important date of August 15, 1971. President Nixon signed into legislation that gold would no longer be the standard used amongst nations for exchange of debt. Now, <clears throat> the reason why we did that is because during the Vietnam War, we ran up a tremendous amount of debt in this country and inflation was running rampant. So the government figured that by limiting what gold could leave this country, they would be able to stabilize the price. Well, you know, it still didn't work. We still had a tremendous amount of problems through the 60s, 70s, and even into the early 80s. But on December 31st, 1974, and I've got to give President Gerald Ford a lot of credit for that, he once again allowed U.S. citizens to legally own gold. So private ownership of gold changed everything for us in this country, and today we can all be thankful to him for what he did to help us today. Maybe we are no longer on a gold standard in this country, but at least we can personally, on our own, put away a little bit into gold and silver to try and protect our future. Now, that doesn't mean that if we take a dollar and put it into gold or a dollar and put it into silver, the value of that cannot drop because it can and it has proved itself over the years. But one of the beauties of gold and silver is the fact that this is acceptable money no matter where you go in the world today. So as dollars and foreign currencies eventually collapse, we will always have the protection of having something that is usable for our daily lives. Okay, folks, I just wanted to share a little bit about what's gone on over the past 124 years since this particular coin was created. And what I think is that although the government <clears throat> changed a lot of what the country should have been um, honoring, and that is gold and silver, we still have the ability today to be able to enjoy something like this. Okay, folks, I'm glad you all joined me today. I hope you're all doing well. I'd love to hear your comments down below. And if you're new to my channel, I would surely appreciate if you would consider subscribing. I produce videos about gold and silver and collecting coins, and I would love to have you on board. And while you're at it, please make sure you click that little bell notification for all so that you can keep track of my videos as I produce them. And giving the video a like helps tremendously in the algorithms, as does leaving a comment. Thanks again, everyone. I hope you're all having a great day, and I look forward to hearing what you all have to say. Until next time, this is GD saying goodbye.